because he first loved me. Oh, let's sing it again. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. He loved me first, loved me. He is the name I love. This is the 10th of November, 2013. Uh, if you look into the program, into your scripture reading, we will, we finished 2 Timothy last Sunday by the help of the Lord, and now we're entering into Titus. Titus. The, the epistle of Paul to Titus. And that's... Titus, the first chapter, verses 1 through 4. In our early morning service, we will read in unison at the count of three. One, two, three. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. May God you may be seated. May God bless the hearers and doers of His holy word. The Epistle of Paul to Titus. I love how Paul opens up and allows you to know who he's submitted under. Who has full control. All right. A lot of times today, and you don't have to go far, you can look in your rural church on the back street or on County Road, or you can be in a metropolitan area, and sometimes in some places that say they love God, people lose thought, especially as leadership, who is really under, who is really under control. Amen. Who has control of the church? But the thing that stuck up, stuck out to me in this reading, to Paul, to Timothy, to Titus is, here we go with an elder, an apostle, who lets you know there's nothing wrong with be with being submitted to the Lord. It's a great thing. I have a privilege of 
being on a, a pastor that's humble and I thank the Lord for, but he doesn't have to tell me everything. I can see some things with my own eyes. Uh, you know, I don't have to be a puppet. I can figure out things when I travel and go places and talk to other people, whether they're members or, but it's, it's a difference. In this day and age, if we look in verse 1, and Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, in the acknowledging of truth, which is after godliness. is after godliness. I'm after what God wants. I'm after God's ways. It's not for me to be exalted up. But it's about the Lord to be exalted up. It's about his kingdom going forward. I, I'm not, I'm not going to argue with a, a preacher over on the other side of town about what they doing or what they got going on. I'm not arguing with other members. I'm not arguing amongst members in my church. But the whole goal is about the Lord's and the kingdom advancement for God's elect, for his people. It's, it's hard to find them. The idea of Paul, a giant in the faith to us, even right now, the education that the man went through, the, the revelation that God opened up to him. And some of us, you know, the four Gospels, and we just lose all mindset as far as other people, as far as becoming humble. And so many times we take advantage of reading these scriptures and just seeing the humbleness in Paul. And that's what I just ask for us as, as believers that we not forget about people just because we know a few scriptures. That we not get so high-minded that we can't get low up on the God. As we look in verse 2, in hope of eternal life. Amen. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. In hope of eternal life. Brothers and sisters, that is our main goal. That is the medication that's above all medication for your sorrows or your daily troubles that you may be encountering. For whatever sickness you have, for whatever you have in lack, this is the key and the solution to everything. The hope of eternal life. Because not only is it a hope, it's also a fact. Because as we read further on, we know which God that cannot lie. It's not like some of us who lie a lot a lie, a lie all the time. God cannot lie. And so that's why I'm asking the church today that I want us to be committed to. If God has given us promises and we're reading his word that he cannot lie, why aren't we standing on the promises of God? It sounds good. you real churchy. You speak Christianese. But when it comes standing on the word of God, we shy away from him. As we finish up, in verse 4, to Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. One thing I want us to realize and understand is with Paul, he said it was something that was a common denominator between him and Titus. And that's the faith. And that's what I'm submitting to you all this morning is, do you have a lack of faith? Because if we're reading the scriptures that God cannot lie, and you're still not standing on his promises, there's something that we're lacking for the common denominator, which we all should have, and that is faith. May God bless you.
morning. Thank Amen. Uh, there is a word. Amen. Man, uh, it, it's going to come from something familiar. So uh, please do not let uh, there is a saying that uh, familiarity uh, breeds contempt. When, when you're too familiar with something, you think you know the ins and outs of it. Yeah. And uh, you know. uh, hey, that's something that can be dismissed. Yeah, that's right. That's, right. That's the general feeling we have in a worldview. Thank God you as believers have a Christian view, That's a godly view, a spiritual view of the things that are happening around us. Um, John, third chapter. Amen. Uh, King in specifically on the 15th, 16th, and 17th verse. Amen. John, the book of John, St. John, amen. We call it one of the Gospels, amen. If you will stand, I had to go back and I told others and I told my mother that I'd never preach again without her Bible in front of me, amen. And although I had my electronics with me, I realized I didn't have it, so I had to hasten back and got it. Amen. Amen. There's, I, that was my promise to my mother. Amen. My mother's deceased at this, this month, one year. Amen. Amen. Godly woman. Godly woman. Okay. Um, John, third chapter. Starting in verse 15, it reads, if you will, with us. Let's read together. Starting at verse 15, book of John, third chapter. It reads, that so whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's enough. You may be seated. That's enough. Amen. That, that's enough. Amen. For, for your consideration, sometimes we walk away with uh, a title to this text. And if you will, saved to serve and serving that we might help in the salvation of others. Some people would have said it the other way by alternate was save to serve and serve to save. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Our, our text here uh, is a familiar one. As I said in the beginning, uh, Jesus, red text for most of you, red text. Father God just... Use your text and your word and your presence in my life. Let Amen. me decrease that you increase. And that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord, my God, my everything. Amen. Amen. These words that we read in this text are sometimes very familiar to the point that we take them for granted. But I'd like us not to do that today. I'd like us to, to look at the bigger picture. This is a story in God's word. We see uh, in the beginning of this chapter, in chapter 2 of John, we see that God has blessed the ministry of his son. And in verse 11, it says, the beginning of the miracles did Jesus in Canaan and Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Then we get over to chapter 3. Mm -hmm. And the miracles of Jesus have been shared across the land. Mm -hmm. And those that were in power, those that were of Jewish descent, and had recognition. Some of them were Sadducees and the Pharisees. Those in the upper le power levels or the Sanhedrin councils. And there came a man, this scripture tells us, by the name of Nicodemus. Uh -oh. 
Nicodemus came by night. There's controversy in theology as to what was the purpose of coming at night. Did he want to spend a little extra time with Jesus, or was it a fear of what the others might think of who he knew and who he wanted to know better? That doesn't really matter. He went. <laughs> and that is point one for us. Will you seek the Lord? Will you seek the Lord when you think that you know a whole bunch about him? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See, see, to be a Pharisee, you had to study like, like Paul the Apostle did on the Gamilly. A great knowledge banks were shared, and you walked away with the equivalent of a doctoral degree in theology and more. You knew the ins and outs of the five first books of the Bible, which were called by Jewish people as a Torah, mm-hmm. and all the other ancillary readings and materials that go along with the Jewish faith. You could preach, and you could teach. You were called a rabbi. You knew a great deal, but today's common part would be not just a preacher, not just a minister, for we all are called to serve. It would be those who have taken the time to read and memorize their scriptures. And that is a good thing. Because mm-hmm. yes, the yes. word is a lamp yes. to our feet. Yes. Amen. Yes. But sometimes we let our knowledge level Uh-oh. Come on, preacher. interrupt seeking and knowing. That's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. Here, Nicodemus came to Jesus. And he asked him a series of questions seeking to know more about the salvation that is offered through the blood that had yet to be shed on Calvary's cross. Mm -hmm. But there had been a foretelling of it throughout the Torah that a Messiah would come who would die for the sins of the world. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then as a result, they would be redeemed back to the Lord. Mm. Falling away in Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit and disobeyed the Lord, we inherited that sin nature. We see that Nicodemus had a question, and the Lord Jesus told him that you must be born again. Amen. This this is kind of confused Nicodemus because he is familiar on a worldly stand of birth by a woman. That's it. Live and then die. How, oh how, Rabbi Teacher, can a man or woman be born again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to him. This is important, you see, because you can have all of the knowledge that's available that's it. in all the 66 books of God's canonized word. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't have Jesus, if he's not abiding in you, when you utter those words, they'll be no different than when Lucifer utters those words. That's it. That's it. Uh, Lucifer knows the Bible backwards and forwards. Yes, we talk about the devil, Satan. Oh, yes. Yes. And he utters it and twists it left and yes, right. That's it. One of the reasons why we need to know it well. Exactly. Amen. So that we can see his deception. Mm, that's right. Amen. His attempt to divert us off of our mission, off our path. Amen. Nicodemus here this morning, uh, Nicodemus wanted to know what, how, can a man be born again? And, and Jesus told him. He told him that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Mm-hmm. You must be born again. That's it. Of the water and the spirit. Mm. The water cleanses us. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Metaphor. The spirit renews and makes us new. It does away with the sin nature. Not that it doesn't go away, but positionally we're made right with God. Something that we could never do. Jesus paid a debt that he did not owe. That we could never have repaid. He died on Calvary's cross 
for our sins. No matter how intelligent and well-educated you are, you must come to Jesus with an open mind and a heart so he can teach you the truth of God. Nicodemus desired that. And with that brief meeting with Jesus, God incarnate, even though he was a Sanhedrin, Council, even though he was a Pharisee, even though he was deeply embedded in the Jewish tradition and knowledge, he understood now that he must surrender his life to Jesus Christ to be born again. Jesus told him, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Brothers and sisters, everlasting life is eternal life. It's without end. Yeah. Yeah. These flesh and bones that we have right now, the mind that's attached to it, the spirit, the soul, connected together in this stage, in this way, by our creator, will not always stay in this position. They will bury the body. If you know Jesus, The spirit and the soul will go to him. For our word says, absent from the body is present with God. See, we must understand that there's an eternity after this. This is not all it is. Some three score and ten, which would be 70 years, and if by measure of strength he allows you to live beyond that, these old bodies will get raggedy. They'll get wrinkled and things and functions that God breathes into them will start working poorly. Not because God is poorly, but because age and the plan was that they not act last forever in this day. They're very temporal. But thank God, God designed and gave us and breathed into us the spirit of life. And that we might be eternal with him, if we seek him, if he abides within us, and we know him and have a personal relationship with him. Mm. Mm. Brothers, we were saved by Jesus dying on the cross, brothers and sisters, not that we should sit on the pews and and share the amount of knowledge that we know. All right. (laughs) And, and have ceremonials. Hey, there's nothing wrong. In, in Sunday school this morning, we're going to study that uh, the Passover. That's right. mm-hmm. And that there is a purpose for celebrations of God's might. And he, he would have us to remember these things. There is a place for fellowshipping with other believers. There is a place for the Lord's Supper. There is a place for something, but if your entirety of your spiritual and your Christian life is going from one Bible study and from one only one men's service and one Lord's Supper and then not interacting with your brothers and sisters and not serving one another, then you have failed in your Christian walk. Mm-hmm. We're not the ones to tell you that because God himself will tell you that when you stand in front of him on that judgment day. All right. The purpose of our salvation, as Nicodemus started to understand, as he walked away from Jesus, as will be shown later after Jesus' death, when Nicodemus himself will be one of the ones who prepares Jesus' body, service is the key. He saved us that we might serve one another. And by virtue of serving one another, we are serving him. Hey, hey. For his plan is that none would be lost. Yep. So when you're saved, when you've given your life to Christ, there are going to be all types of distractions from you serving. Nicodemus had a few. One of them was his position. He was a Pharisee. Now, what will the other brothers and sisters think about when I'm over here with Jesus? <laughs> when, when I'm doing what he has, will have done before the end of his 33-year walk, and he is cleaning the feet of those under him. As an example of what we should do. 
What, what, what are they going to say if I try to emulate, uh, uh, to imitate uh, that which I see the master doing? When he said that I came not to be served, but to serve. Well, I was pious and I was prompt. I had to write a tire on and I looked very, very authoritarian. And I walked amidst the people and they bowed and called me rabbi, preacher, minister, man or woman of God. But do I serve them? Am I about sacrifice? See, the thing about service, brothers and sisters, that Nicodemus came to an understanding is that you can serve someone. And some people have been gotten very good about using their hands and their feet and looking very, very, very service oriented. Mm. But if you don't, haven't been born again. Mm. See, that's the second point. Mm. All the knowledge in the world is not going to get you saved, and all the knowledge in the world is not going to serve others. Mm. All right. All the service in the world without Jesus abiding within you That's it. is going to be for vain. That's right. Mm. Yeah. That's right. See, the purpose of service is the one who receives sees not you, but Jesus in you. Amen. Right. And as a result, they have a desire to be drawn to the original source of your ability to serve. Nicodemus had to learn this because, see, in the physical flesh, we're unable to properly serve as God would have us to serve. You can wonder sometimes, yes, the flesh is weak. Yes, the flesh will get tired. Yes, service is tiresome because you have to give up yourself. Those who are self-centered cannot serve or they don't have Jesus abiding within them. But when you give it up, My when you understand that it's it bigger really. than you, that's you're it. here for a purpose. God has a plan for you. That's God right. saved you for a reason. Mm -hmm. God gave his only begotten son that you might be saved for a purpose, for a reason. Every morning, every day you wake up understanding that these bones, these muscles may ache and be torn. The cardinal may not have been paid today. My friends may have forsaken me That's because I'm not going out with them anymore. That's it. But I'm waking up with a rejuvenated purpose Ooh, to Lord. serve Lord. a true and living God. Right. And to serve it wherever right. he may give me eyesight to see a need. Lord, mm. God. Oh, Lord. God. oh yes. Amen. Oh yes, there is a purpose mm. for God's salvation of man. All right to teach them that he is the only power source by which this world can come to salvation and we can join in on the salvation of those let yet lost. The Jewish teacher of the Bibles knew the Old Testament thoroughly. However, he did not understand God, whom the Bible reveals in the salvation of God, offers to all those who believe. Getting us to our last point. Believing when you weren't there. We, we sometimes in Bible study use the example of a chair. So easily we walk up to the chair. We sit down and if we don't know the manufacturer, we, we, somebody who ordered it, brother, who uh, ordered the church furniture may have known the address, That's and the order number, the spec number of that chair, where it was made. We don't know the people who labored for it. Mm -hmm. But yet we sit All down right. in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we, we have some kind of assurance mm -hmm. that it'll hold us. Yeah. 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 And we have that because we have a form of worldly faith. Yeah. We sat down in chairs in this congregation before, yeah. and they All have right. held us up. Absolutely. Sometimes you go to places where mm -hmm. things are not kept up. Good stewardship is not kept up, and things start rotting and decaying, and you sit down, and you fall, or you've seen someone fall, and every time you go into that office, 
you're very careful about where you sit. That's right. That's right. Because the people who were left as stewards didn't take the time that's it. That's to right. assure that the purpose of the item was maintained and its integrity was maintained. Mm -hmm. All right. That is the nature of faith in a sense. Again and again we see God work his miracles in our lives and those around us. Amen. Again and again, repetition again and again. He never lets us down. He never forsakes us. He never lets us go. He's always with us in spite of our position. And we're not always seeking the Lord. <laughs> God's word says that his favor in the form of the sun and the things shines on those who are believers and unbelievers. That's right. That's it. His mercy continues forever. Yes, it does. But this faith is a reaction of knowing who God is. Amen. And knowing you can trust him. Amen. All right. This is a chair. You can trust him. So believing. Nicodemus had to walk away from there believing what God, what Jesus said. All right. Brothers and sisters, my question to you this morning is, will you believe what God has said in his word? Amen. Do you know his word strong enough that when you encounter difficulties in life and challenges in life, you don't say, I have to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me know. I know there's an app for that. <laughs> I, I know there is an application for that in God's word. I know there is some scripture for that, but did you live it? Because you know it. Because you meditated on it. That's it, brother. Hey. I challenge you as this congregation by the leadership of the angel of this house, Pastor Roberts, and with the assistance of God sent, Sister Sue and Brother Rogers and others, have challenged us to move in to Colossians 2.7, yes. chapter 2.7, and deep go into Bible study, utilizing the tools yes. of, of uh, storytelling yes. and opening up the doors of greater knowledge of who you are in Christ and your shortcomings and that the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross right. is more than sufficient to get you to the level that you not only know who Jesus is, right. but he, you are sure he abides within you. That assurance is so bold and so sure that you step out in that faith we talked about to help others come to a knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. And that's called discipleship. Bless you. Hmm. Amen. Will you believe? When the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness, God sent a plague of snakes to punish the people for their rebellious attitudes. God made a way for those that were doomed to die by snake bite. All they had to do is look up at the bronze snake that Moses was holding up. And if they looked up and believed, they would be saved from sure death by a snake bite of the venom. You see, Jesus offers us something. God offers us something similar. All right. Jesus was cast up. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. Men is inclusive of men and women. If you'll just believe that Jesus died on Calvary's cross for your sins and my sins, mm -hmm. and that salvation is yours, 1 John, 5th chapter, 11th and 12th verse, one of our first verses in Colossians 2, 7, that assurance tells us that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who hath the son hath life. And he who hath not the son of God hath not life. Do you believe it? Will you walk in victory knowing that no, no thing that Satan could cast against you will be victorious? Because you trust in who you are, who you belong to, and the price that was paid on Calvary's cross for your salvation. As I close, I'm reminded of a story. The story is that there was a sea town, and some of you have heard it before, and they would go out fishing, the mainstay of the 
city, the town. So it put a lot of faith in the men rowing out to cast their nets in the bay. There came a mighty storm, and one man was lost. They came in, they looked, and they couldn't find him. As it's important, just as in service. Service requires when you see somebody drowning. You know, people who drown don't just go under. They give you indicators that there is a problem. They're raising their hand and saying, I can't swim. That's it. That's They're it. struggling instead of smoothly stroking yeah. or treading the water of life. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're giving you signals. And you can swim. Or you're in a secure boat. You're waiting, they're waiting for you to reach out your hand as right. Jesus, as Jesus, as God has done it through Jesus Christ, death and resurrection on the cross. He's reaching out his hands to you and me. This story goes on that a second team of people are down in service. We're not looking for the lost one. Right. A storm came and they had to come back without him. A little boy told his mother, he was a teenager, not that little boy, but he was the only one left in the family. He went out on the boat and they stayed out and they dealt with the torm and the tormentual seas. And they grew back in. And you can hear him screaming, we found him! We found him! All right. See, it was his brother that was lost. His mother grabbed around him and he said, Son, I know you went out with them and you guys found them. I'm so happy that he's out, but you put yourself at risk. And the young lad said, Mother, if all of us stay in our comfort zone, if all of us never serve, if none of us were willing to sacrifice because somebody sacrificed for us, if nobody is willing to serve, then all of our beliefs are in vain. Brothers and sisters, as I close, Nicodemus understood that for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And not just saved to sit on the pew. Not just saved to be righteous in your knowledge of God's word. Not just to be saved to have no knowledge, no desire to know God's word, but to serve. But that you might serve by knowing him and knowing his word and trusting in his word and having faith in what has already been done for your salvation, that others might be saved. We were saved to serve, and we serve that others might be saved. May the Lord bless you and keep you with my prayer. Amen. 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 Praise God. 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 Pra
truly hope that your hearts have been touched by God's word and that you realize that you were saved to serve. And if you're not equipped, that's all right. God has made provisions available here at Mount Olive and all over his kingdom for you to know his word and then work and serve based in his word as your foundation. Amen. Amen. And if you choose not to go to Omaha, we would have you not be at home for you can worship with Mount Gilmore because they're having a men's day to day too, according to Brother Crockford. Okay. If all hearts are satisfied, let us stand. Father God, we just thank you for your salvation through your son's death and resurrection, your sacrifice. We thank you that you're bringing more and more uh, to our understanding and realization that you didn't save us just to be content in staying at our mother church, but that we might get out of our comfort zones and out of these pews in whatever gifts and talents you have given us based foundationally in your word and our willingness to be not self-centered, but to work and serve your kingdom building. Help us, Lord. No matter what we think we don't have, let us know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Now may the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, your love, and your word continually resonate in our spirits, shaking us up where we're uncomfortable and where we're content and making us willing to grow and to share and to serve. And we'll be sure to give you the praise and the honor and the glory in those efforts. In Jesus' name, the congregation said, Amen. God bless you. Yes, sir.